You know that uh, Adbusters called for a massive protest in the month of May in the city of Chicago. Called for 50,000 protesters. Uh, we have spoken to um, people involved with the, the Occupy movement who have said that they're planning on heading out to uh, Chicago in May. There is a uh, conference of NATO uh, that is going to be taking place in Chicago. And as of mm, last Friday, three days ago, the G8, that of course is the, um, the leaders of some of the, uh, well, the, uh, I guess the, I don't know, was it France? and uh, Great Britain. Uh, we're talking about the leaders of, uh, of Japan, of sort of, the, sort of uh, the, the most prominent economic powerhouses uh, in the uh, Western world, although I guess Japan's not in the West, but in the industrialized, so-called free world, uh, was um, anticipating meeting in uh, Chicago. And apparently, they've decided they want something more intimate. <laughs> uh, the group of eight meeting will be moved to Camp David. This is according to the White House. Um, it's not about Chicago being able to handle the logistics, as evidenced by the fact that NATO and the ISAF, ISAF meetings will be held there, which are far larger than the G8 meeting. Uh, there are a lot of political and economic security issues that come together at the G8. Also, I imagine, a certain amount of press, and the G8 is explicitly more economic in their, um, in their disposition. And so protesters are basically, you know, and I think there's some value uh, to the fact that they've driven the G8 essentially into uh, Camp David and into a more intimate setting. Because... Without the window dressing of them meeting in a public arena or in a more public arena, we really do get the sense of just how sort of corrupt many of the world leadership policies are. I mean, and I'm specifically thinking about the austerity that's taking place uh, in Europe. And we're looking at the payoffs to banks essentially that we're, we're forced into loaning money to, let's say, Greece, for instance, so that Greece would then buy more products <laughs> from, these, um, from other countries in Europe, therefore continuing the flow of money into the banks. And when your loan goes bad, the business model is, is that you take a hit, and your investors take a hit. But in this day and age, that business model now just becomes, well, instead of us taking a hit, we'll get bailed out by these governments, and they'll be able to bail us out by cutting services and benefits to the people. And if you try and put this up for a referendum to let the people who so theoretically control the government vote on it, Ooh, well then, uh, we're going to cause some real havoc for you. So the G8 now, uh, choosing for something a little more intimate. Something where they can rekindle the fire. You know, something that will allow them to sort of just look back in their time together. But they didn't have to deal with all this messy democracy. Hopefully it'll re-energize their uh, relationship, and maybe, who knows, maybe nine months later we'll have the G9. It's a bit humorous that they're uh, moving to a camp to get away from uh, Occupy. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Maybe what they should do is they should all just stay in tents at Camp David. <laughs>